Hey, this is Max of Red Pill Religion. I'm sending this out to Red Pill Philosophy and Noah and Benjamin. Both of them are super busy and way bigger celebrities than me, so they may not see this. But I'll start by saying, look, man, I'm uh, older than both of you, actually, in my early 50s. And going through a similar transition right now in my thinking and having similar conflicts with people because I dare to even begin questioning things like, did we actually go to the moon or not? One of the things I've noticed is just bringing up that simple question tends to cause, cause certain people to have so much cognitive dissonance they become completely irrational, which is disturbing to me because it's often people I know to be the most cool-headed and logical and open-minded on other topics. Um, and when you look at the flat earth stuff, by the way, I'll add, their stuff is very compelling um, in a number of areas, but I can give you reasons why you can still pause and not embrace it, and I can point out things that you can uh, look out for um, and alternative ways of thinking. Let me just background this by saying I am a smart guy. I am high IQ. Uh, I, I, I vividly remember uh, uh, my uncle when I was about three years old uh, my uncle Eddie, who I love more than life, and uh, I, I mean, I miss him so much. Um, pray for him. Um, he died some time ago, but him taking me out and putting me on his shoulders and pointing at the moon and saying, "There are men there right now," you know, and and it was just a, a, an amazing moment for me. And I always wanted to be an astronaut, and went and did the NASA tours and. Uh, I was just an avid science fiction reader and science, hard science reader and was a computer nerd back in the 80s and, and have been a nerd ever since, right, who's into all that stuff. And, uh, you know, recently when I've been telling people, you know what, it's my considered opinion that it is plausible, that it is possible that we did not go to the moon. Um, and Owen Benjamin convinced me of that. Uh, 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 and, and that was really hard to say out loud, not because I was afraid of what my friends would say, because I thought my friends were open-minded people. Some are, some aren't, but also because, um, it was crushing. I wanted to cry. I had to face the reality of all the weirdness that we've seen out of people like Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin and all the rest, the, the weird behaviors, the... The, 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 all the all the all of that and what hit me the hardest was I can tell you I used to hang out in the online forums back in the 80s you know because I was one of those computer nerds who was online with Usenet and online services and I used to hang out in the forums of uh, Dr. Jerry Purnell a very famous uh, science fiction writer but also polit political scientist a really extraordinarily brilliant man had two different degrees in like uh, like literally in two different kinds of engineering. One was literally rocket science, and I can't remember the other one, but it was relevant. And then he went on and he got a PhD in political science and a PhD in psychology. So I mean, that is a formidable man right there. Probably put like that's like as smart as both your parents combined, right? And Purnell was very successful in the military and in the Air Force in specific and had worked on Project Blue Book. And uh, uh, this was all Jerry Purnell. You can look him up. And, uh, oh, he was, uh, uh, you know, not just a science fiction writer, but, I mean, he had done real stuff, right? And, and then became famous as a really good science, hard science fiction writer with a guy named Larry Nervin. I hung out in his forums, and he was hanging out with other real scientists and engineers and stuff. And, you know, one of the things he was involved in a serious project to try to put a moon base up this in the eighties. Okay. A moon base up because he and a number of his other fellows who were really smart, by the way, not just some clowns on the internet, like they may say, these guys, this is, these are some serious people um, that, you know, they calculated that uh, for the cost of one shuttle, I'm sorry, I believe it was half the cost of one shuttle launch at that time. They could have a permanent base on the moon of three men, probably self-sustaining, if they could just get the funding from it, either from the government or venture capital. 
um, with quite a few smart people saying, yeah, we think we could find ways up there, not only to know, all we got to do is hit water to make oxygen, blah, blah, blah. Um, we, we're sure we're going to find useful minerals and, and radiation and, you know, uranium there, plutonium we can make stuff with. Um, and, and we could grow it over time, um, you know, on this kind of budget. Um, we could probably even make a profit. And, and, you know, other things you were talking about, like eventually build a space tourism industry alone would probably justify all this because once you've got it down, it gets cheaper and cheaper. These were real people with degrees in economics and business and stuff like that. Um, and they were allied with, you know, or friends with other groups, like something called the L5 Society, which uh, look up something called Lagrange Points and how you could put bases up there. And, uh, you know, those were also smart people who had, you know, the know-how to do it and were making the obvious point that this wouldn't be that hard um, and it shouldn't be that expensive. Um, why aren't we doing it? And what kept happening is literally bureaucratic interference and, and static, uh, if not from NASA, than other sources. Uh, even by that time in the, in the late 80s, early 90s, there were people who were real serious aerospace people were like, NASA is malevolent um, if they're not just a boondoggle that's in the way. And I watched, and I used to try and defend NASA, but by the late 90s, uh, you know, like I like to say, like by 1999, I was like, I give up. NASA is completely incompetent. By 2009, though, like you, I kept hearing all the lies, uh, like you, Owen. I mean, I don't think Red Pill philosophy is old enough, but... You, Rowan, kind of remember, by the way, we were promised over and over and over by successive administrations we were going to go to the moon. And it did, by, by 2009, I was like, I think they're just lying. I, I'm not even sure NASA's incompetent. I'm wondering if NASA's malevolent. Now it's 2019. I'm pretty sure NASA is malevolent. I have seen enough. Um, yes, of course, we may grant that some of the footage that the, uh, you know, NASA moon hoaxers have uh, put up and the, you know, space station hoaxer people is all fake, that, you know, that the, that the hoaxers are the evil ones, right? And they're fooling us, right? They're fooling me. They're fooling you, Red Pill Philosophy. They're fooling you, Owen Benjamin. They're fooling you with bullshit and, 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 and glitches and other things that are easily explained away. And it is all actually as it occurred. We have to accept that possibility, right? Um, maybe we're being fooled by these hoaxer people somehow. Um, uh, uh, and, you know, we're just right now, we've seen so much in this world that we've been lied about. We're open to anything, but maybe we're too open. So we don't have to even embrace any one theory. But let, let, let's back up a little bit and let me give you some other theories to embrace. Um, we already know current cosmology is broken, right? It's not that the Big Bang Theory necessarily didn't happen, but there's real stuff all over the place questioning it now. You know, there is reason to think that possibly this beat of light does fluctuate, in which case, uh, uh, in which case, you know, relativity is probably busted and Big Bang's probably busted, but even if that's not true, there's other problems. They keep having to, quote unquote, discover more dark matter to make their equations work. Um, I mean, I've noticed all this all this time. Um, something's broken in current cosmology. That doesn't make flat earthers correct either, however. Um, uh, on the moon landing, though, let's go back to just the moon landing thing. There are other alternative hypotheses that would explain NASA's behavior and Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin's behavior that do not involve a flat earth. Okay, now, uh, these are also kooky sounding hypotheses, but hey, if we're open-minded philosophical men and we know the powers that be are lying to us about everything, we can be open to anything. Hey, we might live in a digital universe um, that is very much like a computer simulation. That's current, that's current quantum physics. That's not sh shady speculation quantum physics. That's current quantum physics. I can, I can introduce you to physicists who will explain it to you. Uh, you know, PhD level smart guys that I know. Um, that's a distinct possibility, in which case all other current cosmology is completely questionable. Um, there's this thing called the electric universe theory. Do I endorse it? No. Do I have to? No. Does that make it wrong? No. How would I know? Literally, how would I know if electric universe is true or not? For that matter, how would I know if digital universe is true or not? I don't have the math and physics training sufficient to verify for myself. 
I have to trust the smart people and the peer-reviewed research from sources I find credible. I don't know if Digital Universe is true. It might be. There's a real good chance. A lot of really smart people think it is. Um, that's another one. Let's go to the moon landing. Um, let's pretend, here's another alternative hypothesis that, that explains something out there. What happened is we really went up there and then we ran into the aliens. Now, don't laugh. I do not advocate the idea that there are aliens that stopped us, but there's a large group of people who do think this. And you know what? They're not, high, they're, they're not low IQ morons. And they aren't all uh, religious freak nuts. I mean, you get an element of that everywhere, right? But there's, you know, you can look up David Icke. Uh, I think that's his name. Or this other guy, uh, 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 David Wilcock um, and others. They've got some really out there theories. But they don't sound too out there because, like, there's this Canadian defenders, defense minister you can look up called Paul Hellyer who will tell you that the whole Area 51 thing is true. And that, uh, and you know, this guy is a former Canadian defense minister, and he's got they got former generals and stuff who say he's telling the truth, who say stuff like, Yeah, Area 51 is real, and basically what's going on is down in Africa, down in uh, down since uh, since uh, Roswell. This is just the story, right? I'm not advocating this, I'm pointing it out to you as a thing to consider, um, as a philosophical man. That, that what happened is they went down to Roswell, uh, you know, and the aliens were there, and we set up permanent uh, relations uh, with the United Nations, and, uh, you know, they meet with the aliens down there in Antarctica, which, by the way, nobody can get down to. So this is another set of theories that, is com that you know, completely accepts your round Earth, your globe Earth, uh, or all the stuff on science, but it would basically mean that Somehow we're being prevented from going above low Earth orbit by powers that don't want us to, big alien powers. You want to laugh? <laughs> don't laugh at them if you don't want them laughing at you, is what I would say. Because who the hell knows who's telling the truth anymore? I don't, except God. Um, but anyway, the um, there's there's one line of thinking that there's a barrier then there because aliens are keeping us in, and that's why we haven't gone. Or... We might actually have moon bases and uh, Mars bases already and have had them for decades. And NASA has been hiding them because it has to do with the aliens that we're interacting with that have their plans for our planet. Um, all of these speculations are worth at least talking about and thinking about in, in these increasingly scary times. Um, uh, uh, we all have a right to make our own decision as to what makes sense. We have agnostic on. Um, I have to admit the flat earth material is more, more compelling than I ever thought it could be. Um, uh, on the other hand, there are questions the flat earthers have not been able to answer to my satisfaction. Um, there are still a lot of, uh, uh assertions that I can't verify for myself. Um, I have people insisting that they can explain away the, you know, telescopic lens effect. And I'm like, frankly, too busy to go verify for myself right now. Uh, I don't have to take a position on flat earth to say, all right, I can say that intelligent people have come to this conclusion who are not crazy and have no sinister agenda. Just like I can say there are people who believe the electric universe. There are people who believe we're, we're, we're in a simulated, something like a simulated universe, not literally, but something like it, digital universe theory, contemporary physics, um, which means all of it's being projected for us. And anything we think is real is really not there. And literally the stars might just be projected there, like we're in Hyrule from Zelda or we're in Minecraft. Um, and it's only been made to look like we're in a bigger universe. Is that possible? How would you say it's not? I didn't say it's, it, it is so. I didn't say, how do you say it's not? You don't know. Um, uh, we could keep going on like this, but the one thing I would say is, especially if you're starting to get that cognitive dissonance feeling that, uh, oh my God, a flat earth must be true because of all that. No, 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 no. Stop yourself. Uh, stabilize yourself and, and you know, decide what's worth even your energy to get into. Like my energy for flat earth is limited. So I will never turn into a, like, here's your daily flat earth report from Red Pill Religion. No, that won't be happening. Um, but if somebody comes by to me and says, I think the earth is flat, I, I might just say, well, 
I can understand why someone might think it these days, because who the hell knows what's true anymore? Except, of course, Christ Jesus, by the way. I don't normally get that overtly religious, but it's true, uh, just so you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's all. I wanted to put that out there because I can especially see that fear. Uh, I know uh, Chris from Red Pill Philosophy is enjoying, you know, just tweaking people off, but I can tell Owen Benjamin is like, fuck, how far do I have to go? Um, and even you, Chris, I mean, you still, there may be other hypotheses and you don't have to be wedded to nothing. Nobody does. Um, but I think we're in a world where, you know, we really should be able to explore things. And then I'll add one final thought. I've had some people come after me uh, recently and even volunteers quit on me on Red Pill Religion. One of the reasons they quit was justified because basically I went off on a stupid rant and attacked somebody unprovoked. I mean, that person's a horrible person. So, um, and I believe what I said was just, it just, I, I, I had no reason to come at them out of the blue like that. So, I, you know, I, I embarrassed. So that was justified to get mad at me over. But then a whole bunch of them started publicly denouncing me as crazy because I said, I think it is possible, it is plausible that maybe they faked the moon landing. Um, I do think that. Um, but I also think it's possible they didn't, and there's weird but plausible alternate explanations for some of the weird stuff we've seen. It's also possible, you know what, we went up there, and what freaked everybody out was the aliens who said, hi, now listen, we don't want you to tell your people about this, but here's what's really going on. Um, I, don't say I believe that. Just smart people do. Some do. I've met them. I've listened to some of their stuff. Maybe they're wrong. Maybe they're crazy. But who's to say? Not me. Um, uh, we have to lose the urge to tell people they're crazy in these incredibly crazy times if they're willing to think for themselves and ask weird questions and maybe come to different conclusions than you, whatever they are. That's what people got to know. I do not fear the flat earthers. I probably will not become one just because I refuse to be wedded to any particular cosmology anymore. And I ain't got time to test any of it myself. But I'm not going to make fun of them. I'm not going to make fun of Moonlander hoaxers. I'm not going to make fun of UFO believers. I'm not going to make fun of Bigfoot believers. I'm not going to make fun of demonic possession believers. I'm not going to make fun of fucking anybody but atheists and, and so-called skeptic rationalists because they're the dumbest motherfuckers on the planet. Now, I'm also going to just let it be known among my friends and among anybody who's on Red Pill Religion, if you can't handle the fact that I'm just going to be this open-minded about questions like this and, and go ahead and just say what I think, then, you know, whatever. This is the direction I'm going. I'm not becoming a flat earther. I'm not becoming a... Uh, a, a UFO guy. I'm not becoming an electric universe proponent. I refuse to become an advocate for idealism and the idea that we're living in a, in, in a digital universe. I refuse to be pinned on anything except Christ Jesus and his dear mother Mary and the fact that we're not going to get out of this mess until people uh, uh, get back to respect for God and religion. Oh, and by the way, Owen Benjamin, uh, uh, one day I would love to challenge Box Day and you guys on uh, the Catholic bashing because uh, uh, there could be there's more constructive ways to talk about Catholicism uh, sometimes in the Catholic Church because a lot of us aren't going to stop being Catholic for you because yeah, we have our reasons. All right. Well, God bless you guys. And I just hope you found this helpful and I hope you actually get to see it. Uh, especially you, Owen, because I can see that deer in the headlights. Do I have to become a flat earth? No. You can become a – that's a plus, That's a possibility I've heard. Um, people who aren't stupid think it's true. I don't know what I think. I don't have to. There you go. Same way. Digital universe, you don't have to have, smart people believe it. Electric universe, some people believe it. Big Bang, some people believe it. There you go. All right, God bless you guys, and uh, you've been a real inspiration, actually, both of you, and, and fun to watch. God bless.